Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Touchdown, Dolphins! Mike Gesicki on the pass from Tua Tonga. Now Brady got to have this one. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Keon Crossan. Accelerating, and off he goes. The 30, 10, 5, and he will bring it back. They'll try it now with Mostert. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. Today. Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. This is the NFL on EA Sports. and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. We are just a few miles from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second and 11 now, Brady, it's caught by Mike Evans. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. And he's going to have a box first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Third and inches, and they've got some extra beef up front. Three tight ends. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. Then he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And Brake has it over the middle. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Nowadays, this has become routine, hasn't it? That was a heck of a route there by the tight end. A great double move for a big-time catch downfield. of scrimmage the 15 it's first and 10. 
Into the red zone, it's Brady. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs gonna throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Brady down to throw. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. So Brady departs and on is Ryan Suckup for the Buccaneer field goal. Suckup's kick is good and the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and ten at their own 22. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds, and he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. Here's Raheem Mostert, the local product from right here in Florida. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. First down, they go with Mostert again. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Levante David in on the tackle. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Once again, it's Mostert. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. A 10-yard pickup. And it's enough for a Dolphins first down. A run with Mostert up the middle. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. On the handoff, this is Mostert. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out on the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Touchdown, Dolphins! Mike Gesicki on the pass from Tua Tug of Iloa. And the Dolphins have moved out in front. It used to be that if you were a big wide receiver, and the coaches wanted to make you a tight end, you resisted the move. Now it's almost a glamour position because they have the mismatch advantage. 
Are you going to cover them with a linebacker? They're probably faster. A defensive back? They're going to be bigger. Tight end is the new big-time position. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it all concluded with a touchdown pass to the tight end, Mike Gesicki. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This will be fielded inside the five. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. The interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Inside handoff down to Fournette. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Shotgun now for Brady. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. Jerome Baker. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Back deep for Miami, Jalen Waddell. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight, and it'll be Dolphin football. So first and 10 now from the 30. It'll be Edmonds to begin the drive. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Good work on the scamper by Tonga Bailoa. It's a first down. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm, but he was more than happy to dissect them with his legs for that first down pickup. Tongue of Iloa on first and ten. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. First down, Tonga Bailoa flushed out, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. 
Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Well, remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, they get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that can spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like a take that type of a play, didn't it, partner? After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Logan Ryan. And the Bucs are going to take over here up near the 40. They exited the pocket trying to improvise. That was a tough throw, and unfortunately, it wound up in the wrong pair of hands. And Brandon, when you're on the run, sometimes your downfield vision can get skewed just a bit. Now, the beauty of extending a play is sometimes your receivers find their way open, but oftentimes you end up closing down part of the field and bringing those defenders to the ball. And that one was picked off. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Second down and six now from the 42. Now Brady. Gets it to his running back, Bernard. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Brady now on first down. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Yeah, it's been a disappointing first half for him, all things considered. And this can serve as the capper. It's a missed field goal in the late going, and that's only going to serve to lessen the mood even further. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. So that would have been something from that distance. But and now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. Taken in at the three. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now Tua. And able to find Gesicki as tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Michelle running up the gut. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center, because remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. They get 14 yards, but not enough for the first down due to the previous penalty.
On second down, this is Edmonds. And he'll have a Dolphins first down as good running gets him to about the 44. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Rolling to his right. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 29-yard line. A third down conversion with a strong gain of 14. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. Get ready. 60 red. 60 red. Ready. Ready. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down, here's Mostert again. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. Oh, and Sanders pushed it to the right. No good. And this will stay a four-point game. Close game, second half. You obviously hate to leave three out on the field. Especially in a game like this when you know points are hard to come by. That was one of their best opportunities so far. And they come away with nothing. They'll begin here with Bernard. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And they will take over first and 10. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Levante David, and the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people got to question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. Right, 
So after the INT, it's Brady. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. He'll look to throw toward the sideline, and he locates Gage. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. The offense on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Up the gun, Fournette. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and 10. Here's Brady. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Throwing is Brady on third down. Getting it out wide here to Bernard. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now Brady got to have this one. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Keon Crossan. Accelerating, and off he goes. The 30, 10, 5. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. Well, I mean, both offenses have clearly struggled throughout, so kind of fitting that it's another big defensive play that yields points here in the late going. Yeah, really, both of these defenses have been up to the task throughout this game, and we haven't seen much in terms of offensive creativity or results. And there, not only does the defense force a turnover, but they have the presence of mind to take it back for six points. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that pushes the lead up to 11. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. Taking it about the one. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Tampa Bay offense set to go again. We'll see if they can band back together after the pick six. It hurt badly, but still within striking distance. A two-score game with a good chunk of time on the clock. Now a dump off here complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. A good start there on first down. They've got to have this drive. No doubt about it. Down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays. That will be the key to this drive. And yeah, Brady's throw there incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him. One of the most accurate guys in the league. Totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Good, clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get them off the field with a three and out. Brady going to go on fourth down. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Bucs try it on fourth down to come up empty. And the Dolphins get the football in great field position. So now with a little over two minutes to play, the road back gets very difficult. Difficult, but still not impossible if they go ahead and play this thing out. Now the defense has to come up big. They've got to go for a strip of the football on each and every snap to try and give themselves a chance. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 84 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Here we go. 
Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They hand it off to Moster. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll try it now with Mostert. And he is in! Touchdown, Miami! Raheem Mostert taking it in from two yards out. And the Dolphins have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. So they only needed a couple of feet there on fourth down, but they got more than that and then some as he takes this into the end zone. And I love your description right there, right? Fourth and short. They got that. No problem. Let's go ahead and get the rest of it. Finish it off in the end zone. Touchdown. Everyone goes away happy on that one. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is up to 18 now. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Moster. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Taken in at the three. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. But probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And this will wind up being a third and three. Here's Brady to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free and it's second down. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. The defense shaking their heads. Not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To throw, it's Brady. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Brady looking to throw on third and two. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third. And now they deal with fourth down. 
One final try now for Brady. And it's intercepted at the goal line. And the Dolphins come up with a late turnover, but it will probably only matter to the statisticians as this ball game is now officially over. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter, but second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time, and the hitter's getting to see him, and then they come out after that, and the bats start blazing, right? I think they saw their best stuff in the first quarter and just shut everything down from that point on. What a great, convincing performance. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Tampa.